Welcome to Debt Free in 30, the show where every week we take 30 minutes to talk to industry experts about debt, money, and personal finance. I'm Doug Hoyes. On July 1st, 2015, some new laws will take effect in Ontario, and these laws are laws you've probably never heard of. So to talk about that, I'm joined by my Hoyes Michaelis co-founder and business partner, Ted Michaelis. Ted, how are you doing today? Fine, Doug. How's it going? Great. So talking about legislation is boring. No one wants to hear you and me start reading sections of the new law. but Including this, you and me. Yeah, that's right. We don't, we don't want to do that. <laughs> but this is a very important new law, and it will impact a lot of the people listening to us today. So I thought we'd start with a different approach. So we're going to do a brand new segment here, and I'm calling it Story Time with Ted. How exciting. Isn't that a great title? So <laughs> over the last 20 years, you probably met with, I don't know, 10,000, 20,000 people. And, and I know a lot of those people have gotten burned by the, the topic we're going to introduce today. So I want you to tell me a story about someone you've met with. Now, I don't want real names. I don't want you to tell me what their job was or even what city they lived in because obviously when we meet with people, we don't want to talk about it on the radio. So, so I'm going to make up the guy's name. The guy's name is Fred. So, Ted, I want you to tell me a story about Fred. Well, this is pretty easy because I meet with people like Fred all the time. In fact, it's distressing how often people respond to these debt settlement ads. I'll give you, I'll give you Fred's story in a nutshell. So about four months ago, he decided that he was in financial trouble. He, just, he couldn't make his payments every month, and he was worried about the collection letters. He was starting to get behind. So he saw an ad that said, reduce your debt by 70%. Avoid bankruptcy. Well, that sounds like a great solution. So he called the number, met with a fella. He said, look, what we can do is we're going to put you in a debt settlement plan. We're going to, yo, $50,000, Fred. We're going to settle for $15,000. You're going to make payments of $500 a month for the next 30 months to deal with it. Well, actually, it's going to be 36 months, Fred, because you've got to pay us some fees first. And that was the catch. So the first six months payments of $500 a month were going to the settlement company as a fee. Fred got two months into it, and then he got a, a notice from the small claims court. One of his creditors was taking legal action against him. Well, he called the settlement company, and they said, well, when I, when I signed this deal with you, you told me to refer all these people to you, to forward the collection letters to you, to tell you whenever anybody called. And I did all of that, and now I'm getting sued. And they, the debt settlement company simply said, well, you know what? You need legal protection now. You've got to go see a trustee to a proposal, a consumer proposal, or possibly file bankruptcy. So Fred's out $1,000 for nothing. And Fred actually didn't do too badly because we've talked to lots of people who've been out, you know, a lot more than that, $2,000 no. or more. First thing I said to Fred was, I guess you're lucky that it wasn't six months into it. Yeah, because <laughs> you would have had to even pay even more. So, yeah. so there you go. There's our first edition of Storytime with Ted. And obviously the subject of today's uh, broadcast is debt settlement. It's something we've kind of touched on in a few previous shows, but we've never done a whole show on it. And we've never talked about the new rules that are coming into effect in Ontario. So I think, Ted, in the in the story you just told, there were two key components. The first one was big fees. Yep. These guys charge a lot of money. And the second component was that in a lot of cases, nothing actually happens. And I'm going to put a link in the show notes, but the Canadian Bankers Association, who should know, these are the guys who represent the people who, who we're paying the money to, they said that only about 10% of deals that banks receive from debt settlement companies are actually accepted. So that doesn't mean they're actually paid in full. That means they actually accept the deal up front. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, the stat that we were told was less than 3% are ever successfully completed. So your 10% stat doesn't surprise me at all, but 3%, that's three guys out of 100 where this solution actually works. So debt settlement almost always never works. That's the whole point. So before we talk about the new legislation, what you just described in Fred's situation sounds a little bit like a consumer proposal. We go to the creditors and make a deal. So... What is the difference between a debt settlement and a consumer proposal? Well, a couple of critical elements. So the first is the debt settlement company is allowed to charge their fees up front before any work actually gets done. So there's no deal in place. You don't know that the solution is going to work. And as we just said, in the vast majority of cases, the solution doesn't work. There isn't a deal to be had. You've already paid the fee. But more importantly, a consumer proposal is a legal procedure. There's a very specific set of rules and regulations surrounding them, and you're afforded immediate protection under the law. 
So Fred got sued two months into the plan that he was trying to do. That can't happen in a consumer proposal. There's something called a stay of proceedings that immediately stops legal actions against you. That's probably the biggest difference. The second is you're only paying fees when the deal is made and then money is forwarded to the creditors. So you're not out of pocket for somebody that's hopefully going to make a deal for you. You know the deal's in place and you're protected under the law. So in a consumer proposal, I come into you, I've got a bunch of debts, you crunch the numbers and you say, okay, the proposal we're going to make is $400 a month for the next four years to your creditors. Right. So how much do I pay up front? Well, so presumably you don't pay anything up front. Now, it all depends on the local trustee office that you're dealing with. I mean, our policy is that we want you to make your first payment in the first month. Uh, a lot of trustees charge you an initial payment on day one. Some of them don't charge anything till 60 days into it. It literally depends on your financial situation and the terms of the deal. But that first payment is going directly towards the settlement. So if the deal is to pay $400 a month for 48 months, you're not putting $400 in the trustee's pocket. You're putting $400 into the deal. So I come into you on day one, and let's say I say to you, well, Ted, I get paid every two weeks, so it would be a lot easier if instead of paying $400 a month, I paid $200 every two weeks. Can I do that? You can, and that's the smarter way to do it, too, because you're actually making extra payments that way. Okay, so I, I pay $200 every two weeks. So let's say my first paycheck is two weeks from now, so I can make my first payment in two weeks. Yep. And every two weeks thereafter, 200 bucks. Correct. So when do I know that the creditors said yes? So the, when you file a consumer proposal, the creditors get 45 calendar days to respond to the trustee's office. So that means weekends, holidays don't matter. It's 45 days from the day you start. Uh, they can say yes, they can say no, or they can counter offer. Once, once the creditors have made their opinion known, you've got another 15 days where you can still change your mind and say, you know what, this isn't the solution I thought it was going to be. That almost never happens, but the provision is there in the law. So worst case scenario, I guess, I, I make payments to you for 45 days, maybe you know one or, or two or three biweekly payments. If the creditors say no, I could be out those 45-day payments, but... I, I actually did still get some protection during those 45 days, though, even if the creditors said no? Well, you did, and um, I've, I've probably given you the wrong impression here. So if the creditors say no, they almost always counteroffer. So let's go back to the example we've been using. And it's, it's, it's not a typical example, actually. The numbers are a little high. So let's say you, you've done a deal. You're offering $400 a month for 48 months to settle on your debts. The creditors come back and say, you know what? We'd like you to pay that $400 a month for 60 months. So they have counteroffered. They said no to the first one. They've given you a second one. Um, I think the statistic something, it's something phenomenal. 99% of all the proposals that we offer in our firm are accepted either as filed or as amended. So it's unusual for you not to have a deal. In fact, the only cases I can think of where no deal was possible was because there was something unusual about the circumstances. Um, for instance, Fred borrowed $20,000 to buy a pickup truck from TD, but he didn't actually buy the pickup truck. So TD has some concerns where the money went. But that's 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 not the norm. Yeah, they're usually unusual situations. Like I owed a huge amount of money to Revenue Canada and I didn't file my taxes or something. Right. Well, they may be less less willing to make a deal. So, yep. so in 99% of the cases, when someone comes in to file a consumer proposal with us, we will come up with a deal that is acceptable both to you, the person who owes the money, and the people who you owe the money to, and and you're getting legal protection. That's the big difference between a consumer proposal and debt settlement. Yeah, and what you got to remember is that 99% is our experience rating. Different trustees are going to have different experience. Depends on how many of you do. I mean, we really are industry leaders in this particular brand of the business. But no matter what number you're using and people may be listening going, well, I don't believe that 99%, maybe it's a little less. Yeah, but we already said that debt settlement, according to the Canadian Bankers Association, is only accepted 10% of the time. That's yeah. that's obviously a, a significant difference. So, yeah. okay, we'd like to talk a bit about the legislation. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to come back and go through the specifics of this new legislation and see why it's different. And then I want your opinion on whether it's actually going to protect consumers or if this is just yet another government boondoggle. We can talk about that when we come back. You're listening to Debt Free in 30. Looking for information on budgeting, debt consolidation, credit counseling, debt management, and debt settlement? For unbiased advice, go to moneyproblems.ca, the website for Canadians with money problems who want money solutions. Moneyproblems.ca. 
You're listening to Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. We're back on Debt Free in 30. My name is Doug Hoyes. My guest today is Ted Michaelis, and we are talking about debt settlement and more specifically the new laws that are coming into effect in Ontario. We talked in the first segment that the problem with debt settlement companies is that they spend a lot of money on advertising. They feed on the fear that people have about talking to a bankruptcy trustee and convince a lot of people in debt to do a debt settlement. But in the vast majority of cases, it doesn't work. Consumers are being taken advantage of, making large payments to the debt settlement companies with little to no likelihood that their debts would actually be eliminated. So... Finally, after many years of consultation, I think, Ted, it's been like five years or something that, At this, least. that this has been in the work. The laws surrounding debt settlement services in Ontario are set to change in an attempt by the government to curb these perceived abuses of the, the debt settlement industry. So as of January 1st, 2015, so this is already in the past, the Collection Agencies Act was renamed the Collection and Debt Settlement Services Act. So what this means is that all collection agents and debt settlement companies are now regulated under the same act. Kind of bizarre, but that's the way it is. Now, the change we want to talk about today goes into effect on July 1st, 2015. So if you're listening to this on the radio, this is not very far in the future. If you're listening to this uh, on our podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcast, it may have already happened. But it's July 1st that all of the provisions of this new legislation become law. And the most significant change in the new rules is that debt settlement companies' fees are capped. So under the old rules, there really were no rules. That's right. It was a wild west. You know, charge whatever you want. So Ted, I want you to tell me about the new rules. And again, I said at the outset, we're not going to start quoting things. If you really want to read it, you can go look up Regulation 27 Sub 2 Sub 2. Let's give it to people in layman's terms. How does it work with the new fee rules for debt settlements? All right. So the first critical change is that the debt settlement companies are no longer allowed to charge upfront fees. I I think there's a $50 fee that they can levy, but that's it. Mm -hmm. So the old model where they could charge you thousands of dollars and do nothing is gone. Instead, they are entitled to 15% of the payments received if you're doing a plan over a period of time. So let's say your settlement is to do $300 a month for the next three years. They would be entitled to take 15% of each one of those payments. Alternatively, they're allowed to take 10% of the debt for lump sum settlements. So let's say you owed Big Bank $20,000 and they negotiated a settlement for you of $10,000. They're allowed to charge you a fee of 10% of the 20 or $2,000 and that's it. Okay, so two different types of fees here and you're right, they can charge a fee of $50 for each outstanding account oh, as okay. a setup fee. So if you've got five different credit cards, in theory, they could charge you $50 for each one of those. That's right. kind of minor, who cares? The, the real thing is that if it's a series of payments, they the maximum they can charge is 15% of each payment. So if if the, each payment is 100 bucks, they can charge an additional 15 bucks on top of that. So your right. payment would be $115. And if you're making a lump sum payment, then they can charge 10% of the amount of each debt. So we were talking in the first segment about Fred with his $40,000 worth of debt. So if Fred made a lump sum settlement, then the debt settlement fee on that $40,000 debt would be four thousand dollars. Would be ten percent of the forty thousand. So yep. four four thousand dollars. So okay. So under the new rules, there's no upfront fees. Fees can only be charged on payments made to a creditor, which I would assume implies the creditor has to have accepted the deal. Right. And and that I guess in the past was really the big problem with debt settlements. Yes. So it used to be that they could pre- present a deal to you, the person who owes the money, collect a fee from you, and then try and go and make a deal if they ever actually tried to make the deal. Now they have to make the deal. There has to be agreement in place, and money has to change hands. So the consumer is much better off than they were under the old system because there were no rules under the old system. Having said that, I'm still not crazy about this. Well, okay, so let's get into your opinion here. We've talked about the facts. So 
Um, I assume you're a big supporter of the government. You think governments should do more and more in our lives. They're really the solution to all our problems. Which government are we talking if about it, now? All governments. I think all governments are, are fantastic. All the problems in the world are solved by governments. So mm. what do you think the impact of this new law is going to be? Is this going to protect consumers and everything will be wonderful? Yeah. Like, what do, you, what do you envision in the future? The greatest benefit of this new legislation is that it's probably driven – most of these guys out of business. So the model they had in the past was charge a fee and then maybe we'll make a deal. They're not allowed to do that anymore. So they can't charge the fee until a deal's in place. Well, they don't really have any experience at making deals. And so I'm hopeful that all of these guys will just disappear, or at least most of them, well, any that are trying to operate within the law, certainly. Yeah. And in fact, as we sit here in June of 2015 recording this, it's really already started to happen. That's right. When they announced this legislation a couple of years ago, I mean, it drove some of the biggest players out of the market. And and a lot of those big players were actually American based. That's right. It's a it's been a funny industry. So they the U.S. has dealt with all of this. They're probably seven or eight years ahead of where we are in Canada. So all of these businesses were set up in the U.S. They got pushed out of most of the states. One by one, they got knocked down. So they came to Canada. And one by one, they began knocked out of Canadian provinces. Yeah, and I think we should be clear here. We are not either pro or con debt settlement. There are cases where it does make sense. If you've got a debt that is you know, reasonably old, but you want to take care of it, if you do have a lump sum... In a consumer proposal, we may have to charge X. Well, it's possible that that creditor might have might have accepted slightly less. Now, I think we already quoted the stats. I mean, okay, maybe one case of 100, it actually works. And we're certainly not saying that everybody who does this is not reputable. I mean, that's that's not for us to, to, to say. I am willing to say I haven't met one that's reputable well, yet. Can I say that? You, you, well, yeah, this is, you, we have you on for your, for your opinion. Right. I think we would certainly both agree that the big U.S companies that came up here and did this were almost universally despised. I don't think I can find anyone who would who would have anything good to say about them. So so your prediction then is that these guys will essentially disappear from the marketplace? Well, they're not going to advertise as debt settlement companies anymore. So now they're going to morph into debt consultants. Uh, and this new piece of legislation has nothing to do with debt consulting. So debt consulting is, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a plan. I'm going to help you figure out how to get out of debt, and I'm going to charge you a consulting fee for that. That's where I think this is going to go. So there's going to be a transition. Some of the language is going to change, and people are still going to be taken advantage of just a different way. So in so you've got some debts. I can't, as a debt settlement person, do a debt settlement anymore because there's no way for me to charge an upfront fee without right. knowing whether the creditor is going to accept it or not. And in most cases, they aren't accepting them. So, so that business avenue, that business avenue is gone. So now what I can do then is charge you a fee to give you advice. That's exactly right. There are, there are very, well, as far as I know, there are no registrations regarding consulting on financial matters. Unless you're selling specific financial products and you're licensed, so a life insurance salesperson, a real estate agent, uh, an RSP, RESP salesperson, all of those guys have licenses. But someone who's just advocating for debt advice, telling you how to restructure your finances and helping you at your kitchen table, there are no laws about that. So... I could start up a company giving debt advice and I could charge a hundred bucks an hour or 50 bucks a letter to every creditor and there are no regulations whatsoever surrounding that. Correct. I can, I can do whatever I want. So I guess what the, the message then to consumers who are listening is be very careful when you're, yeah. when you're hearing those new ads that will probably right. start coming up. Anytime somebody says something to you that sounds like it's too good to be true, do your homework, do your research. I mean, trustees, we have this same problem. With a consumer proposal, we normally settle for somewhere around 30 cents on the dollar. And because of all of these other ads that are out there from debt settlement companies and debt consultants, uh, you don't know who to believe. So find out, are you actually talking to a licensed trustee? Is this company registered with the Better Business Bureau? I mean, there are ways because of the Internet that you can look into people's backgrounds and their, their experience other folks have had with them. Make sure you're dealing with somebody reputable. And if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Probably is. And so your prediction is we may not see the debt settlement per se 
uh, advertisements in the future, but we're going to start seeing a different type of advertisement. That's Here, right. we can help you. We can coach you. We have this program that will write the letters for you. They can't talk directly to the creditors, so it will be, we'll show you how to do it, and we'll make everything fine. Yeah, you hit on the magic word. I think we're going to see a lot of people say, debt coaches, coach, coach, coach. We're going to help you. We're going to show you how to do it. We're not actually going to do it. And again, we're not trashing debt coaches. I mean, in fact, we've had, you know, the guy from Debt Coach Canada, Eric Putnam, on this show. And, um, you know, I've certainly never heard any complaints about him. We've, we've known him for many years. He's, he's, a, he's a reputable guy. But he's not coaching you on how to make debt settlements. He's coaching you on how to manage your finances. That's a, that's a totally different thing. So, right. okay. So it'll be interesting to see how this all pans out. Uh, that's some very good advice on the new debt settlement rules that come into effect July 1st, 2015 in Ontario. Ted, thanks very much for being here. You're listening to Debt Free in 30 with Doug Hoyes. We'll be right back. What are the warning signs of debt problems? Where can I find a free online debt options calculator? Where can I get free ebooks and guides? Find all the answers at moneyproblems.ca, the website for Canadians with money problems who want money solutions. Moneyproblems.ca. You're listening to Debt Free in 30. Here's your host, Doug Hoyes. Welcome back. It's time for the 30 second recap of what we discussed today. On today's show, Ted Michaelis explained that under new laws to take effect in Ontario on July 1st, 2015, debt settlement companies will be prevented from charging upfront fees and their fees will be capped, which is designed to help consumers. That's the 30 second recap of what we discussed today. So what's my take on the new rules? As you probably guessed from our comments on the show, I'm not a big believer in government being the solution to all of our problems. While it's true that the new rules will drastically alter or eliminate the old debt settlement company model, there are a lot of people with debt, and it's too big a market to ignore, so I agree with Ted's prediction. It's likely that some new industry will spring up to try to separate consumers from their money. Don't be fooled. There are no quick fixes. You can't just pay some telemarketer a bunch of money to make your debts go away. You either need to cut your expenses and work through it on your own, or if your debts are too big to handle, you need to get help from a competent, experienced, licensed professional. That's our show for today. Full show notes are available on our website, including details on why a consumer proposal is almost always a vastly better solution than a debt settlement plan. So please go to our website at hoys.com, that's H-O-Y-E-S.com, for more information. Thanks for listening. Until next week, I'm Doug Hoys. That was Debt Free in 30. If debt problems are keeping you up at night, if collection calls leave you afraid to answer the phone, it's time to end the cycle. You can do something about your debt. Call Hoy's Michaelis today at 310-PLAN.